if you are in this field of climate change or oceanography and climate impacts and so on, you probably heard a lot about marine heat waves. It's becoming more and more popular among scientists as a topic of research and I think the first paper may have come from uh, Nikki Gruber from ETH in Switzerland I think but once somebody defines something like a marine heat wave you know you have some definitions exceedance of certain temperature 98 percentile 95th percentile how many days it has to stay and so on then you have all these resources like reanalysis products where people can go and hack through them and find marine heat waves their trends their you know impacts and so on but you'll be surprised at how few papers there are on actual impacts but in the meantime lots of papers get written on the trends and of course you get a lot of news that they are getting worse and duration frequency intensity why are impacts important because you know if in the middle of the ocean there is a heat wave and you can show it with temperature and you can even make attempts to predict them uh, what if you don't know anything about the impacts what are you going to do with it and let's say you know the impacts coral waves don't want heat waves what are you going to do about the corals if you get a prediction of a heat wave are you able to go out and find an engineering solution to try and help them deal with this heat wave that doesn't mean you don't have to forecast them or you don't have to understand them but there is a desperate requirement that we quantify the impacts so this is a nice story that looks at marine heat waves and their impacts it can become controversial because they go against the mainstream mainstream is always saying marine heat waves are here they are bad and they are getting worse right so marine heat waves are not a dominant driver of change in demersal fishes so we'll look at this and then there is a news and views article on this as usually happens in nature and science and they make some additional points so i'm going to just read through them let's read the abstract of the main this is the main paper marine heat waves have been linked to negative ecological effects in recent decades so there is already some evidence if marine heat waves regularly induce community reorganization reorganization as americans would say and biome collapses in fishes the consequences could be catastrophic for ecosystems, fisheries and human communities, no doubt at all. However, the extent to which marine heat waves have negative impacts on fish biomass or community composition or even whether they affect, uh, their effect can be distinguished from natural and sampling variability remains unclear. This is very tricky because in the open ocean we don't have enough data to establish baselines let alone high frequency data to look at impacts. You know on land we do attribution studies and um, lots of claims about how glo uh, global warming made a heat wave twice as likely or 200 percent as likely and so on and so forth but this study investigated the effects of 248 sea bottom heat waves from 1993 to 2019 on marine fishes by analyzing 82,322 hauls or samples from long-term scientific surveys of continental shelf ecosystems in North America and Europe spanning the subtropics to the Arctic. So there is a geographic location which can affect the results. So you have to be careful. Here we show that the effects of marine heat waves on fish bio mass were often minimal and could not be distinguished from natural and sampling variability. Furthermore, marine heat waves were not consistently associated with the tropicalization, gain of warm affiliated species, and deborealization, loss of cold affiliated species in these systems. Tropicalization is where the warming is spreading poleward and marine ecosystem is responding with species compositions and boreal, uh, deborealization is where the warming is then driving those uh, cold affiliated species uh, further north let's say okay all those steep declines in biomass occasionally occurred after marine heat waves these were the exception not the rule so there are impacts but you have to understand uh, whether that's really systematic 
systemic or not. And as uh, the old saying goes, nature makes the rules and biology finds the loopholes. So we know a lot about how species of fish, for example, respond to huge perturbations like El Nino, which is a massive heat wave in the eastern Pacific or other modes of variability elsewhere, like the Indian Ocean uh, El Nino or the Atlantic El Nino. Uh, against the highly variable backdrop of ocean ecosystems, marine heat waves have not driven biomass change or community turnover in fish communities that support many of the world's largest and most productive fisheries. There are lots of results, so I'll jump right to the end and read some of their paragraphs from the conclusion, and then we'll read a bit more from the News and Views article on this paper. Our findings highlight the need to understand divergent responses to extreme events. Single species responses may be mediated by thermal tolerances, but we did not find evidence that cold affiliated species decline or that warm affiliated species increase following marine heat waves. Okay, you can look up the figure there, but basically already it is known that corals respond in certain ways and uh, fish respond in a certain ways to these pulses of heat, which we call heat waves. This is now a new field where we are identifying marine heat waves. You have to remember they don't evolve as fast as heat waves on land because ocean uh, thermal uh, inertia is very high and so on. Other studies find that species responses vary from one extreme event to another, portfolio and uh, storage effects may explain why ecosystem level marine heat wave effects are rare, but they do not reveal the, uh, the what caused certain marine heat waves to have deleterious ecological effects. Cumulative impacts of MHWs and other stressors such as harmful algal blooms or low productivity events could play a role. Perhaps even a, uh, a very extreme MHWs in the future will cross a tipping point beyond which adverse ecological effects will occur, but we did not see such a tipping point in the recent historical record. It's so mostly a caveat saying don't get excited, don't make alarmist messages, we have many things to worry about, don't add another thing that's not certain yet, especially since we cannot do much about you know, heat waves in the middle of the ocean for now. Other fields, for example, coral, coral reef ecology have identified such thresholds or tipping points, although the generality of thresholds across ecological systems remains unclear. Generality across corals themselves remains unclear because corals in the Caribbean or the Red Sea would be uh, are responding very differently than le corals elsewhere like the Great Barrier Reef. Gaining mechanistic uh, insights into why only some MHWs have deleterious effects and on only some species is necessary for any future efforts to identify an effective threshold or forecast MHW impacts and should be a research priority for the field. In addition, ecosystem responses to extreme pulse events such as MHWs can shape impacts of more gradual press uh, trends. So chronic and acute stressors are different. The complex interactions between these climate change effects warrant future research. Understanding MHW impacts on entire ocean ecosystem is particularly crucial in the context of accelerating global change and efforts to advance towards ecosystem-based management that considers the many links between species and their environments. There are many details in the statements here. Ecosystem-based uh, management is where you don't just catch one fish, you worry about how the entire ecosystem around it is linked. But we also know that on land ecosystems never move, species move. So if you have a forest that's getting perturbed, some species who are mobile generalists can adapt, uh, adapt to higher latitudes or up the mountain and so on and so forth to deal with warming. But that also is something that should work in the ocean. So understanding the whole ecosystem response then becomes important, right? MHW occurrences as project are projected to emerge above their natural variability within the century in many regions. Lots of uncertainties in the projections, but nonetheless, future research will be needed to determine the extent to which fish community impacts of MHWs will grow as MHWs intensify 
or weather portfolio and other ecological effects can buffer ecosystems from MHW impacts. Marine life is more vulnerable to warming than terrestrial life because marine organisms tend to live close to their thermal limits and fewer thermal refugia exist in the seas. Refugia is where somehow everything going wrong around but there are pockets where they can survive because the habitat suitability still survives. Uh, observed and predicted changes in marine ecosystems in response to global warming formed part of the rationale behind the Paris Climate Agreement to limit global warming mean surface temperature increase above the industrial levels to 1.5 degrees C by 2100 with a 67 percent probability which is important as a future that is more than 1.5 degrees C warmer looks increasingly likely it's more critical than ever to develop a deeper understanding of what drives ecological responses to extreme climate events so let's read oops yeah so I somehow uh, didn't delete the empty slide but nonetheless this is news and views on that paper says rethinking the effects of marine heat waves on fish marine heat waves are on the rise a surprising result from the analysis of data for fish populations in Europe and North America could change uh, ways of thinking about ecological consequences of such events. The British biologist Thomas Huxley observed that the great tragedy of science is the slaying of a beautiful hypothesis by an ugly fact. So this is a bit harsh on the whole uh, bandwagon of marine heat waves, but nonetheless these are important. Such inconvenient truths are however crucial for the advancement of knowledge and they force a reassessment of what has been taken for granted. Writing in Nature, Fredston et al. report a result that uh, that will cause a rethink about how marine heat waves, periods of unusually warm temperatures in the ocean, affect uh, fish communities. Contrary to the author's expectations and to existing research, Fredston and colleagues were unable to detect an effect of these events at the ecosystem level not the species level but the ecosystem level. This unexpected negative result changes our understanding of how these heat waves affect marine ecosystems and raises many questions. Jumping ahead, again, even this text I'm chopping and taking just the most salient point, so you definitely need to go back and read the original papers if you want to you know, follow up on the details. For organisms that live in the ocean, marine heat waves can be very bit, uh, every bit as disruptive as the consequences of a cyclone, earthquake or flood on land. For example, between 2014 and 2016, a high-profile heat wave known as the blob in northeast Pacific was associated with extreme temperatures across much of the North East Pacific Ocean. This led to species being found hundreds or even thousands of kilometers outside their typical range, uh, outbreaks of harmful algal blooms, mass die-offs of seabirds and breeding failures in marine mammals. In other areas, heat waves have driven loss of algae in coral reefs, so coral reef bleaching happens and die-offs of aquatic kelp forests. Socioeconomic consequences have also been documented for marine heat waves. So question is not really marine heat waves have an impact or not, depends on the scale, the duration and maybe the frequency because species have evolved to variability like El Nino for example which is a massive warming and they have found strategies to survive El Ninos but human perturbations when um, El Nino is hitting, so if anchovies are getting uh, decimated by uh, El Nino, by the warming and so on. If you go and fish on top, you may create a tipping point. So you, you have to separate natural effects from human effects, for example. In this case, natural effects, natural variability effects from marine heat wave effect, which are indirectly related to human activities, or let's say directly related. Taken in isolation, it would be tempting to conclude that this paper dismisses the idea that marine heat waves are an ecologically important phenomenon, and this is common because climate scientists don't like disagreement. Uh, if you have a strong message on marine heat waves being very bad, and somebody comes along and says, well, the data doesn't support such an alarmist message, then they will say, no, 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 this is not correct. So that would be a mistake to say, take this in isolation. Fredson and colleagues results do not negate the hundreds of papers that have documented ecological consequences of such heat waves, but how can this negative result be reconciled with 
almost everything published previously in this realm. So read the details, but here the author's analysis might be criticized for being too broad and generic. For example, the implicit assumption of a common response to marine heat waves across all ecosystems might not be valid and is certainly not supported by evident, uh, not, sorry, and is certainly not supported by the evidence available. How individual ecosystems respond to these heat waves will reflect to the unique grouping of the species present and their ability to tolerate extreme temperatures. Ecosystems comprising different species might uh, give different responses to the same heat wave conditions. There is a figure that shows marine heat wave cumulative intensity and biomass log ratio and the basic idea is that the impact is not statistically uh, significant or doesn't emerge out of the natural variability which you can see jumps around quite a bit here in the cumulative intensity being uh, degree C days, degree heating days let's say being uh, zero. So I'm not going to read the details but you get the point. Okay. Just to conclude, Freston and colleagues work reshapes our understanding of how marine uh, sys ecosystems are affected by heat waves. Although heat waves clearly have striking effects on some individual cases, the authors find no evidence for large systematic effects at the community level for bottom dwelling fish. Future work needs to address the processes that drive striking effects for some species but not for others, particularly given that marine heat waves are becoming more common in a changing climate. As ever in science, the downfall of one hypothesis will give rise to many more questions to answer and more data will bring new hypotheses. then we collect more data to test the hypothesis like these people are doing and then decide if that holds up or not, test positive or um, theory emerges out of that or not. I have also talked about corals and the different responses to warming by different corals and whether you know genes of corals which are surviving or thriving in warm waters can be used to save the corals that are not doing so well and so on. And there are obviously always many details. So one study doesn't uh, negate all the other studies but my main point would be that the bandwagon effect of finding marine heat waves everywhere needs to be considered with these things in mind in terms of the impacts and uh, when you think about ecosystems you may want to think about integrated measures like the health of the ecosystem where you are looking at biodiversity or complexity of the ecosystem, its resilience to such heat waves and so on and maybe some kind of a measure of productivity where the entire ecosystem is producing some output, let's say primary production or export of carbon and whether that is affected by some species being negatively affected by the marine heat wave. So you need a lot of data at high frequency in the middle of the ocean even to have baselines. So that's always very tricky. Doesn't mean we cannot try to predict marine heat waves but we just need to be less alarmist about them till we are certain because there are too many things to worry about and we want to worry about things that are quite certain rather than keep on spending energy on things that may be still a bit speculative. Okay, with that polemic. Some people tell me polemic is bad and I'm always angry but actually I'm not. Okay, see you.